Hey guys and girls, welcome back to another video in this amazing series here uh, where we just go through all kinds of stuff and make all kinds of examples and do all kinds of things in those examples and you learn all kinds of things, alright? So, this is example 21. What we're going to go through today is some stuff I missed because I'm dumb uh, when it comes to functions and some details uh, that, that could be good to know. Like, uh, last example I showed, what? A global variable is so a global variable is outside any function scope okay so it's right here here anything any variable we write here is going to be a global variable so uh, there is a there is a general understanding within program with programmers here is that you don't really want to make global variables it's not a good idea you almost never want to have global variables but what could be admissible is a constant global variable that cannot be changed and it's just there to keep maybe a max value of something. So, uh, what do we want to do? Well, what I want to show you is the correct way to write a constant global variable. It's just as easy as writing a constant local variable. So you write const, and then you write integer, and we're going to have two things. We're going to have max, uh, max cars, let's say max cars, and you want to initialize them directly here. You don't want to initialize it later because uh, it's constant. Uh, let's say we can have max 20 cars and we'll have max bikes, 10 bikes. So the thing here is that when you write a constant global variable, you want to do it in capitals. You don't have to do this, but this is just a general good habit to uh, because then you can recognize them anywhere in the code. Oh, okay, I'm using this. This must be a constant global variable somewhere. So you want to have underscores between and you want to have uh, capitals. The reason for underscores is, you know, remember when you, we write a normal thing, a number of, like you can switch up the cases here, like the big O. You can't do that with capitals, obviously, so you need the underscores. So we have two constant global variables. This is okay in programming. This is all right. You can do this. And then you can access these anywhere in the program, within any function, without passing them in as parameters. You can do whatever you want. And then we're going to take a look at something else. So we're going to have int add car okay and then we're gonna have an int add bike okay so what's gonna happen is that I'm gonna show you three things I showed you this here we have a constant global variable and here we have I'm not going to do any more function overloading. You already know what that is now. Uh, but what we're going to do is we're going to do some default variables. So uh, what I want to do is include string. String. All right. So what we're going to do is string name equals empty. And then we're going to have a double uh, mileage equals uh, 25.0. So what is this? Why, why am I initializing my variables in here? Remember last, before we just wrote it like this, so the user can input something here. And that's what we want, right? You want user to input what kind of car they want to add, right? But this is called a default parameter. This means that if the user chooses not to input anything here, it will have a default value from the start, okay? And we can just add a bunch of cars that are empty 25 with 25 mileage without ever when we call this function add car all we do is just pass in an empty parameter list and it will just take all the default things here but of course we can say Toyota with the mileage 50.0 and it will add a Toyota 50 of course we could do that but it has it has default variables okay so let's say the default is a Ford okay let's say it's a Ford um, so this is what you can do. And what I want to show you in here is called a default parameter. Okay, and the important thing is you can't just choose which ones of these you want to do default. Like, you, you just not give this a default value. You can't do that. You have to, if you give one of them a default value, I think it's this way around. You can't, yeah, you can't give the first one a default and then not give the ones afterwards the default value. What you have to do is you want to uh, make sure all your final ones have default values. You could do this if you wanted, but not the other way around. Okay, so because that's going to give you some issues later. Um, 
so let's see. So in here, for example, I can't just do this. If I'm giving this a value, I can't just not give this a value and then expect it to uh, just take forward here. No, you have to give it a value here. Uh, if you don't want to give it any values, it's from the back. Okay, you can give it the first value, the second one, and the third one you can leave empty, but not the other way around. I hope you understand what I'm saying here. Um, but anyway, that's done. We'll give the same parameters for bike here. Bike. And then we'll give you the Kawasaki. And we'll give you the 10, because it's sports bike. And then uh, we have our two functions. So in here, I'm going to show you something really cool here. You know, if you make an integer here, number of bikes is zero. And then you start saying number of uh, bikes. Uh, we'll use the plus plus thing here. And then you do this where you return. Okay, what's this going to do? Every time you call the function, whoops, every time you call this function, okay, it's going to create a number of bikes variable, add it to by one, all right, and then send it out. So every time you call it, you're going to get one, 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 right? It's always going to give you one back. It's not going to save this variable ever for you. It's going to destroy it here, create it again, destroy it, create it again every time you call this. But there's a way to tell uh, the function or this variable to stay alive forever. Uh, just within here, you can't access this anywhere else because it's in the scope, okay, in the function scope. But you can tell it to at least stay alive and always keep counting up. And the way you m do that with variables, uh, both in functions and in other uh, places and stuff like that within scopes, is you give it the keyword stat static. This is a static local variable. So what happens here is that number of bikes is going to be created once and then it's going to go on and add one to it and return one. Then it's going to be like, oh, it's static. Okay, so I'm going to, I'm keeping this alive. So two and then it's going to return two and then it's going to stay alive within this function for until you, until you close the program basically for the entire life, lifetime of the program. So this is a static local variable. So number of cars. And it's good to know because you use this quite a lot. Okay, so static local variable. And uh, there we go. This means that we can every time we add a car, we can keep track of this. This isn't the best way to do things. This is just to show you how, how it's done. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to have a we're going to have a for loop where we're going to add 30 things here. Remember, we had max cars and max bikes as well. So we're going to do this in here. Um, whoops. Okay. For loop. Uh, int number of, no, int cars. Oh, one second. Let's do it in here. Equals. Oh, I'm so dumb, dude. I'm so dumb. Sorry about that. I was just confused. Cars equals add car. Okay, we'll give it an empty. Bike equals add bike. So what's going to happen is, as I said, it's going to add this and keep it alive. So we're always going to be adding cars and bikes uh, one after another. And 30 times. But then we're going to use this and we're going to stop printing out bikes and cars uh, after we reach the individual max numbers here. So if cars is less or equal to max cars. See, because this is global, we can access it in main without passing in anything, without anything. This is accessible everywhere because they're global. So we could access this in the function as well. So uh, actually, that would be actually, yeah, that's a much better idea. Let's just do this. Cars. <laughs> Excuse me. And okay, so um, in here because these are global, like I said, we can I can show off their capabilities. So um, if 
number of car cars is less than max cars then we'll add otherwise we will not add anything okay and the same thing here if number of bikes less than max bikes then we'll add it otherwise we won't so this is going to make sure that we stay on track here so let's run this program well, let's see what happens okay see it added one 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 two three four five six seven eight nine ten all the way until 10 on bikes because that's our max number and then up to 20 on cars okay and it just stopped there so we could access our global variables wherever we wanted here in main in any other area here as long as we're in this file all right in this cpp file um, there are ways to you know of course ways to uh, divide a program into several files we'll talk about that very soon uh, when you do classes and things like that so uh, then there's another story but for now just remember global right here you can access them anywhere then we had the static local variables and the default parameters so hope you learned something today I really hope you learned something today and uh, we'll probably start with classes really soon now so yeah enjoy your day and I'll see you in the next video thanks for watching